This is the 8-9 Combo, and this is Games of the Week. I'm Brett McKay, and this is Harry Jones. Hello, mate. Welcome back. How are you doing? How's it, Brett? Let's get in. Uh, Let's this is, get this in. is my, one of my favorite things nowadays, is picking the Games of the Week. It is good fun. Uh, episode 10 of the 8-9 Combo Rugby Podcast with Simon Strawn from Game Line Analytics <laughs> is on all the pod platforms, Amazon Music and Audible, Spotify and Apple, YouTube and all their musical offspring uh, iHeart and whatever is left of Google Podcasts. So literally, wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find us. So please do like, follow, subscribe, uh, and rate and review and share. It's just great to have you all on board, wherever you are on board. Uh, we're loving this end of week show. Um, it's short and sharp, and it's all about us picking the games that stand out to us around the rugby world. And so we want to hear from you as well. We want to hear what you think, whether you think we picked the right game. So hit us up uh, on all the socials at 8-9-Combo and leave your thoughts as well in the comments section right here below if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, let's get into it, mate. This week's Games of the Week, and there are some fantastic contests this week. We'll kick off with Round 9 of Super Rugby Pacific. Um, it's another, it's the last of the bye weeks, um, in which there's only four games. Starts in Suva on, on Friday evening with the Fijian Drua and the Hurricanes. I reckon this might be Fiji's first night game at home, mm. which cool, which could be cool. So it's, it's at the National Stadium in Suva. Uh, that's followed by the Queensland Reds and the Highlanders in Brisbane on Saturday. We go to Auckland for the Blues and Brumbies at Eden Park, and we finish with the Force and Crusaders over in Western Australia. The pick is absolutely Blues and Brumbies this week. There is no question about that. It's second v third. They both won six, lost one. They're both on 27 points. Uh, the Blues have the best defence in Super Rugby Pacific by some margin. The last four games, they've conceded one, none, one, and no mm. tries. Again, they're... they're they're unbelievable. They've only considered 12 tries in seven games. Yeah, I think like the narrative of this year's Super Rugby is that most of the top five teams have actually flipped the switch and they're doing mm. something that they're not known for, and that's making it better. You know, the Brumbies yeah. are big on the counter, the Hurricanes have a really mighty set piece, yeah. uh, the Blues are defending. Uh, the the Chiefs, I guess, are the only one. Maybe they're just playing like Chiefs. But it's interesting to see how that all shakes out. I know mm. it's Super Rugby. I just threw a pigeon among the cats or a cat into the pigeons with my latest it article. Did. You and I are going to go on that yes. madman Martin Devlin's show later today to talk about it. But I really think um, there is an uptick in the Australian fortunes in Super Rugby. So this this game does loom large. You just don't yeah. want to see the Brumbies lose badly. You want to see it be at least, you know, final second. Uh, and I, I, I kind of think, I kind of think your Brumbies are going to take this one. That's my sense. Look, they they have they have won in Auckland before, and they've gone awfully close. Like they 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 were, they were, they were a non given penalty away from winning a semi final in Auckland. Uh, it's such a huge ago. marker, though. If if you yeah. can win, in, if you can win in Auckland, if you can beat a Kiwi team in Auckland, I mean that in itself, that's one of your KPI, whatever. That's Absolutely. one of your yeah. Absolutely. The whole season can be defined by that. So yeah, yeah. And pick. they, I mean, they've they've been beaten by the Chiefs, but they beat the Highlanders. They're about to start a run of New Zealand <laughs> games now to the Brumbies. Brilliant. Interestingly, they won't finish. They'll remain in the top four this weekend, regardless of the result, because the Rebels have got a buy. They're on twenty-four points, uh, and the Chiefs are outside the the, uh, the top four, and they're on a buy as well. So the Brumbies will stay exactly where they are. Yeah, which is which is uh, which is an interesting one. So, look, it's, it is going to be interesting. The table we've talked about before: the Hurricanes are five points clear on thirty-two. Then you got the Blues and Brumbies at twenty-seven, the Rebels twenty-four, the Chiefs twenty-three. Uh, Queensland is six on seventeen. The Druith th are seventh on thirteen. Moana Pacifica are on thirteen points as well. And so, yeah, we're getting <coughs> we're on the downhill run of uh, of Super Rugby. Seven rounds to go, including including this one. So we will see how that all plays out. Uh, we move to the Irk at the United Rugby Championship. We're up to round fourteen. We start with Ulster and Cardiff in Belfast on Friday night. Uh, Glasgow and the Shocks at Scotston as well on Friday. On Saturday, 
the Lions host the Leinster at Ellis Park. Uh, Benetton face the Dragons at Treviso. The Bulls and Munster are at Loftus. The Stormers and Ospreys are in Cape Town. Uh, Connaught hosting Zebra and Galway. And we finish with Edinburgh and Scarlets in Edinburgh. What is your pick? The lovely, be- beloved Irk, uh, so coined by our friend Rian Lowe, who I just got the finished Irk. talking to because we were reading the Telegraph's article about Chasing the Sun, episode four together, because it's so fun mm-hmm. to to read what the vanquished enemy talks about uh, the episode that they were they featured in. So yeah, right. Uh, there's a wonderful article about they're just saying uh, that there was no tactics to it. It was blunt force trauma. Springboks were so lucky. Uh, and then literally translating that some of the words. feels like a misrepresentation. <laughs> but it was so fun to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> And so we're like, what is the word where you're rejoicing your enemy's pain? Look, the Bulls just got handed uh, handed a really tough loss, and it was all in service of Jake White's calculation that mm. the Irk is the better uh, place for his resources this year, just this mm. year, because mm. he's got to pick one or the other and, and the, the travel or whatever and, and not being funded yet through the Irk. So this looms as a really pressure match for Jake because what if he drops at home yes. to Munster, right? So this yes. is the pay. you have to win this. This becomes a must yes. win. Uh, it'll be a warm evening at Loftus. Um, the Bulls are, I think, third on the log. Munster's it's, fourth. It's, it's third v fourth. Uh, the Bulls are on forty five points. Munster on forty three. Bulls are one nine. Munster one eight. Yeah. So so the Bulls are done with the cup knockouts now. It's focused on finishing top or top two in the league. Uh, both these teams are on a four-game winning streak inside the Irk. The Bulls score a lot of points, 56 mm. tries. They don't worry too much about giving up tries. They just go into a, like a racetrack mode and they're like, can you keep up with them for 80? Um, they, they, uh, they, they actually have a really good points differential, but they do it a different way. They yeah. give up 200, like 300 points, whereas Munster's only given up 221. They do it with offloads. The Bulls are offload city. Uh, and the Munster tries to be stingy. So their set pieces should be kind of equal. Yep. Uh, both are hard of the breakdown, uh, but on turnovers lost, that's probably the opportunity there. Munster does give up a few too many turnovers, and that's bad news for Munster because the Bulls have those speedy counterattacker yeah. scoop merchants. So I would say the Bulls should be good for it, but it's still a really pressure match. And Yeah. There's and a occasion, going on there. The occasion should look good. The light blue against yeah. the red. It's, it's, Munster has developed quickly as a rivalry with South African teams. They know yeah. how to, to be the villain. They and know they how have to do been it. to South Africa and won, haven't they? So, yeah. they, 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 know, they know how to be a villain that you kind of like. You know, it's like yeah. you, ad, the, you admire them, but you also think, God, no, I don't want to lose to those guys. I'd love to beat them. It, it's it's interesting. that like the If the Sharks could do the Bulls a massive favor and beat Glasgow, Mm-hmm. And the Bulls could be top two, which is very possible because the Sharks, as possible. we've said, have got their players back now. They're playing They've proper rugby found, again. I yeah. think I said they found their teeth again. So yeah, that's that's it's interesting. We'll see how that <laughs> plays out. That's I mean that's a ripping game. That is a ripping game. Even when I mean, there's a few, there are a few, actually a few interesting games in uh, in the Earth this weekend. But that's that's a that's a good pick there. The Premiership um, is back. It's round fifteen. Uh, we kick off with. Saracens hosting Gloucester uh, in London on Saturday. Northampton hosts Leicester. Uh, Exeter and Bath um, play. That's a bit of a derby out uh, out in the West Country. Bristol and Newcastle in Bristol on Sunday. And we finish with Sale and hosting Harlequins at Salford. Exeter Bath is the pick there. Um, that's a it's a really interesting one. That Bath a second on forty four points, eight wins. Uh, Exeter. Are sixth on 40 points, but also eight wins. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams with eight wins. That's ridiculous. I'd not looked at that table so closely. Bath, Saracens, Harlequins, Bristol, Exeter, Leicester, Sale are all on eight wins. So uh, in terms of for and against, um, they're actually pretty close. Uh, Exeter and Bath as well. So, uh, you know, an Exeter win at home and they are well and truly up into the top four then. So, yeah, that's that's starting to get a little, a little bit a little bit spicy there. That'll be, yeah, that'll no, be good. It also matters for our friend Dan McKellar at Leicester. So all these games have yeah. implications for everyone else that's log jammed in those seven to eight wins. And particularly when teams are starting to take points off each other too. So this is going to be the time where we see a lot of mid-table movement 
I think, mm. in um, in England. So that's uh, that is a interesting, interesting, interesting game. Uh, to France, the top 14, round 21. How have they played 21 rounds? Did they start like two <laughs> weeks after their grand final or something? <laughs> crazy. Uh, cast host La Rochelle, starred Rochelet, as you insisted the other day. Perpignan host uh, Lyon. Uh, Yona host Racing. Stade Francais hosting Bayonne in Paris. And Paul B. Montpellier. Toulon, Toulouse uh, in Toulon, and then Bordeaux, Clermont on Sunday rounds it out. What's your pick? My pick is Toulon versus Toulouse, the battle yeah. of the the so battle of the twos. Um, so it's Saturday night in the that. seaport of Toulon. Toulon is an underrated town. It's not even yep. a city. It's not big. You should go there. It's a, a big <laughs> navy town. Um, it's yeah. a really fun place to walk around in. Admiral Horatio Nelson, my boy, uh, blockaded it for two years. And that, a blockade, is probably how Toulouse can win. Um, so these teams are both in the top four of uh, the... Toulou who Toulon can win or Toulouse can win? Toulouse, I think, should blockade them. Yeah. It's actually when you're playing home and away in the French leagues, it's it's a huge difference. Uh, yeah. More than any other league, statistically, but also just emotionally, when you're there, you see why it's so stacked against the visitor. So yeah. Yeah. you've got to go into it as a siege mentality. Uh, they're both in the top four. Uh, they are Toulouse. Toulouse, uh, Toulouse are second on 60 points, 13 wins. Toulon uh, fourth on 51 points, 11 wins. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. So they're very tight. They cannot afford another loss at this time. Uh, Toulon has the better points differential, though. And I always look at points yeah. differential at the at this stage of a league because yeah. it seems to sort of play out that way. If you yeah. if you are 139 plus versus 128, it's actually meaningful. Um I think, you know, so this team is owned by a pharmaceutical mega magnate too long. Um, so I think, you know, they should all probably have a piss test before the game. But listen, <laughs> I think this is a massive, <laughs> massive match. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that'll be a good one. That will be a good one. Uh, and again, like really congested in that mid table. There's only one win basically between sixth and 12th by the looks of it so that's that's all awfully tight uh in league one in japan this weekend um it's round 14 my the pick is kubota spears against kaboko kobe steelers up in sapporo on sunday this is eighth v fifth it's actually a tough round to pick from because there's top teams are playing teams that are well below them but this one's a bit interesting in that kobe have won only one of their last four and that was against the winless Kentetsu liners two or three weeks ago um the Spears are seven points behind the Steelers, and they're like an edge closer to Toyota for Blitz, who are fifth, I think, uh, with a win. And the for Blitz play Panasonic, who are leading by 45 points or something at the moment. They are well ahead. So um, that sort of feels like the pick this week. Otherwise, it's, yeah, it's sort of top plays bottom, and there's not really, not really too much in it this week. It feels like an easy pick in. In Japan, what about in uh, in Major League Rugby? I've looked at the draw here, and if you had, I haven't picked the game that I think you should pick, I might just end this call. Early. <laughs> <laughs> we, we go back to Quincy, Massachusetts, Saturday night, uh, Saturday afternoon. Actually, uh, it'll be 15 degrees for your Celsius boys. Sunny, the beast of the East. Free Jacks are uh, five and one, and the best of the West. Sea Wolves are six and one. That should be a proper scrap um, for New England. That's, Sean. That's the that's the East Conference leaders against the Western Conference leaders. Like this That's is a it. proper top, top, top. Yeah. Uh, in and for New England, you got Sean Ralph, a Waikato boy. He's a cooker. He's a New Zealand school cooker. Mm -hmm. uh, under twenty for Chiefs, so proper player. And then for Seattle, we have your friend Sam Windsor. Sam Windsor boy for the win. Dog. Brumbies Academy lad played for Ulster yeah. as well. He's the top scorer in history. Played. I reckon he would, have played, he would have played with Ned Hennigan for New South Wales country. In the yeah, MLC. he played there too. But he, he he is the leading scorer in history for the MLR, yes. in the young league of the MLR. Yes, yes. He went over there from season one, I think, with the goddamn Houston Cedricats. Surprisingly so, surprisingly big lad too for a Yeah, yeah, for a fly half. Playmaker. Yeah, yeah, big boy. Um, I don't mind the look. Of, I actually don't mind the look of, of Old Glory DC and 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 Houston as well. That's that's actually an interesting little little match up there. So keep an eye on that one. Bit of free advice. It's worth. <laughs> <It's worth. laughs> one more worth. one more service. Yeah, <laughs> what, what, whatever it's worth. But that is it for another edition of Games of the Week. This is the perfect way for us to start thinking about the weekend's games. I love it. This really is our service to rugby.
It's it's just it's great. I love it. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we definitely do want to hear from you as well. Uh, tell us what you think at the 8-9 Combo on all the socials or leave your thoughts in the comments section right here on the 8-9 Combo YouTube channel. You can find Harry and I on the socials in our usual places uh, at Harry Baldy Jones and at BMC Sport. Uh, and please do like, follow, subscribe on your pod platform of choice and on YouTube as well. Make sure you get every episode as soon as it drops, particularly now that we're doing two episodes a week. You don't want to miss out on one along the way. Uh, if you haven't already, do find episode 10 of the 8-9 Combo Rugby Podcast with Simon Strawn from Gainline Analytics. Uh, a fantastic, fascinating, thoroughly enjoyable rugby chat it was. So, uh, so go and check it out. This is Games of the Week from the 8-9 Combo, the short side set piece combination you didn't realise you needed coming to you from the podcast double act you already had uh i'm brett mckay he's harry jones and we'll be back in your ears with our worst commentary puns next week <laughs> come pun with us <laughs> um i did 